Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Fargo Season 3, Episode 7, it's called The Law of Inevitability, full spoilers for the episode as always. And also first of all apologies, this is a, an extra day late than it normally is, uh, that wasn't planned, it just kind of worked out that way. Uh, but we're here now and we're going to talk about it, so uh, yeah, this uh, what I thought was interesting about this one, uh, just from a... Just from a setting point of view is that the, the entire thing takes place on the same night that we were already on from the last episode. We never get to morning, we never cut to a new day. It's still the mm. continuation of the same night. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, it almost feels like the rest of this season could take place over just like the next day or so. It could do. could do. There's a motorbike castle outside, mm. <laughs> outside mm. the house. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I could see that. It was very much the fallout of everything that happened, obviously, finding finding Ray, who was on his own when, when Gloria finds him, and the police investigation of that, and also the arrest of Nicky at the motel, uh, and, a, and a very sort of homage to the movie again, because there was a very similar scene in the movie of someone sneaking out of the, uh, the bathroom of the motel and being yeah. grabbed right at the last second. Uh, and she's in, in custody and Gloria's trying to get to her and I think a lot of that's about k- k- kind of the, the the hurdles that are put in front of someone, the red tape uh, yeah. of people who don't believe there's a problem. Because obviously uh, uh, Shia Wiggum's character, the new chief, he is constantly, constantly just making excuses. Oh, sure, it's suspicious that the security camera went out when someone tried to assassinate the prisoner, but... Glitches happen. Hams yeah, at my yeah, house all the I time. Think, I think that was the line. It's like, come watch a movie at my yeah. house. <laughs> Honestly, it was going so far with it. Now, admittedly, I still just think that he's just he just wants it to be easy. But part of me almost thought for a second when he was doing it so much that I was like, "Are you working for Varga? <laughs> Is that how deep this goes?" <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I really think he just he just can't be arsed. He, he's just like, it is, yeah. it's Christmas, goddammit, I'm not dealing with this shit. In fact, it's Christmas Eve, as uh, Gloria mentioned. Exactly. Now, admittedly, I think it might have just put into Christmas Eve over midnight, rather than it already being Christmas Eve. I could be wrong. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I just got the impression, because no one mentioned it last episode. I just I feel true. like I feel like it's just put into Christmas Eve over midnight. Perhaps, yeah. Yeah. Um... But yeah, that's a big theme of this, so it's her trying to get, in, get into Nikki. Uh, of course, key points here is that Nikki... Obviously, she, she she has a good poker face, actually, and she's a card player, so maybe this is why, but obviously she sees the photograph of Ray being dead, and she doesn't seem to have been told about this before this moment. No, it was meant to be a shock, isn't it? Yeah, and she keeps stone-faced. And I, I almost think, oh, is that necessarily even the right thing to do, perhaps? I, I get why she's like, oh, I'm putting on a brave face. I don't, I don't want to seem vulnerable. I, I, you know, it's really what she... I think in her head is what she's going through, but I think almost would it not look better to the the police if you break down if you react? Yeah, like, yeah, it looks oh, more shit. genuine. I, I think maybe it's because part of her was actually expecting this. Mm, yeah, when she got grabbed, maybe that was an expectation. Uh, yeah, but once he left, she did seem to pay close attention to the, the photograph. She seemed to notice something. I will say, I, I thought it was a little strange how you know she had such a good poke face before. The minute she, he leaves the room. She literally just grabs the photo and and starts staring at it. It's like there's still a camera; they can still see this. Oh no, they can. I, I think for me, what that says is that she has a good poker face, but she's still not thinking clearly. Like it's obvious yeah. at that point she has to have the face on, but she's not thinking strategically enough to th- no, think about fair. all the avenues. So yeah, I, I think yeah. I think that's kind of what that says to me because we know she cares. Like that because the yeah. whole thing is he's sitting there. He's like, oh yeah. Like, this doesn't make sense, he's got the hillbilly hair, he's got all this, he's got that, I mean, why are you doing? Oh, it turns out he's the one signing your papers, and it all fits together, and he's just accusing her of all these things, and of, of this being a, a disingenuous relationship, and I think all season of Ken, I made a point of saying, no, there's actually a genuine thing, it's yeah, weird and as wacky the, as they the are. Start, at the start, we thought maybe that was yeah. the case, but it, it's very clearly not. And she's, I think she's almost offended as well that he's even saying that. But again, she's mm. keeping the face on, which is why she doesn't want to give him anything. She doesn't want to be vulnerable in front of this, you know, asshole, as, as far as she's concerned. Uh, and he has been kind of an asshole, but he's also he just is. doing his job. But uh, we know he's an asshole because of the way he treats Gloria. If it was this, just this, this scene on its own, I wouldn't think he was an asshole. No, I'd, you'd uh, think it was just this is how he treats suspects. Yeah, he's, he's been a bad cop. That's, that's, what yeah. he's, that's what he's doing, essentially. Uh, not quite hitting her with the phone book, bad cop, but bad cop. So, so she she noticed something in the photo. I think there's two possibilities here, at least in my mind, of what she's noticing. She's noticing a piece of evidence that tells her who the killer is. 
Uh, she's maybe noticing the stamp that's lying under the dresser. It was hard to see exactly what it was. Or that dresser is, what, is the one that had the money in it. And she's thinking, oh, the money's still there because it's not been opened. That's possible, yeah. Uh, I think the former's more lately, but I think the second one's still... Yeah, I mean, I'm going... We know how much she, she did care about Ray, yeah. so would she be that concerned with the money? Or would she be more concerned with getting oh, vengeance? Oh, I agree. I think the first is far more lately. I'm, I'm just... Yeah. Like, because it's a dresser, I'm just thinking, yeah, like, mm. she, there may be something she knows is in there, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, and that's why she's, like, maybe she even thinks it looks like he's trying to grab it, because of the way he's lying. He's, like, almost as if he's reaching for it, and what, mm. he's not quite got to it. So, maybe, I don't know. But, yeah, I think I think it's more likely that she's noticing something that's telling her who's responsible in some way. Yeah, or, or at the very least, just who to rule out, maybe. Yeah, maybe. But I'm thinking if it is the stamp, and she knows, like, there's only one person who had that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it then. Us. Does she go to Emmett, or does she still think of Varga, is the question. Because obviously, she was expecting Varga and that to come anyway. Mm. Right, that's why they, they left in the first place. Like she was expecting this. So yeah. it's a case of which one does she think? Well, at this point, it's hard to say. The, the fact that she later on, when she when, when they do come back to her, because the only reason why, because Gloria obviously keeps trying to get in to see her, and she's she tries to sneak in, and the guy's like, oh, no, you need the blue form filled out. She goes to where the forms are, I need the blue form. Oh, you're not this department? Oh, that means you need this form, saying so you're superior. Well, technically, yeah, I got, am a superior. You've got to get a yellow form, so yeah. before you can get the blue form. Yeah, it ended up being three forms, because she had to get something signed from her. What her superior would be like the, the 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 state deputy or whoever you know it'd be someone who is like even higher ranking. So she has to get a form by him signed to get a yellow form signed before she can even get the blue form signed. Uh, Bureaucracy at its finest. Ah, uh, oh, I hate red tape. I hate it so much. Mm. But she 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 ends up getting in because presumably she sneaks in after the assassin uh, played by DJ Qualls who tries to assassinate Nikki. And uh, he he runs off, but it's, it's after this incident, and the, the aforementioned uh, you know talk of video glitching and all that that they finally like right, let's go in and talk to her. She she has a point that we should do our jobs properly and actually just explore all the avenues. <laughs> God damn it! He's, uh, like, oh, it's, uh, it's, he's like it's Christmas. I just want to go home. <laughs> you can you can see it on his face. Yeah, but she puts up a fight. Uh, and again, this is maybe setting her up to be the ultimate foe for Vargas or Varga rather than Vargas. Uh, yeah, I think that that's clearly the plan. Yeah, I, it seems like that's the way it's going. So they go in and talk to her, and she basically gives the, her theory to, to to a point. It's actually quite funny. Earlier on, when they're talking to this precinct's uh, captain, and she like just like puts out all the the entire thing, like, oh, this this guy hired this guy to murder this guy or steal something from this guy, but it went wrong. He went to the wrong person, and then there's, like, she she described everything in like the space of thirty seconds, and it did legitimately sound just a little bit insane. Just a touch. And then she's like, I've got charts. <laughs> I've got charts. It do doesn't want, help, does it? Do you want to see my charts? Which I'm sure we're done with pen and paper because Gloria is... Yes, obviously. Uh, you know, not, not, not a technology person. Uh, but yes, yeah, so they go in and talk to her and Gloria says, I think this is what happened. Uh, and Nikki just has a deep throat moment <laughs> and says, follow the money. And I'm like, well, we're watching all the President's Men. What's going on? And... Uh, it's like follow the money, and obviously we know what she means by that because she, she's seen the evidence of these other people, of Varga, of Yuri, uh, and all these guys, and Mimo. Uh, but like, you, you get the impression, like you know, the new chief's not like I don't want to do all this effort. No, 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 you had your chance. You, you want to tell us some actual information that leads to something? That's fine. Uh, where she's like, no, 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 I'll bring you back some pie, and we'll talk about this some more. And she she requests uh, coconut cream. Yes. Uh, which I, I I approve of. I like cream. I like coconut. Ugh, I, I, I hate coconut. Oh, it's but... the way it feels. It's all little bits. It's just, ugh, no. No, I don't want that in my mouth. <laughs> well, tough. She picked coconut cream. Coconut cream's what she's getting. She, she went down in my estimation after that. No, no, no. Coconut cream. I'm, 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 off, I'm fine with that. Uh, and of course, they, they put her onto the prison transfer, and I'm like, man, is she vulnerable in this prison transfer? And lo and behold, that turns out to be the case. But, of course, we have the big, big moment. She gets on the bus, and you know whoever's sitting next to her is going to be someone, because the camera very intentionally 
hides it, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Until until it just nicely pans over, and we see Mister Wrench, I believe his name was from season one. Am I getting the name right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. The de- Death Assassin from season one. Yeah. Uh, who is now the only character so far to appear in all three seasons. So that is uh, pretty notable. He was a kid in season two, in case you're. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it wasn't the same actor. It was right around the very end, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, but he was a kid. Yeah. Um, so I, th- I think that's. Uh, well, it's exciting, obviously, and it makes sense that he's in prison given his line of work and all that. And obviously, we're set four years after season one, so sure. Yeah. In fact, even in real time, we're three years since season one, so I mean, it's close enough that. It's not far off, is it? Yeah. yeah. So. No, so he's there, drum, drum beats kicking in, it's all, all very... Th- I actually thought Gloria was going to follow the prison bus just to make sure that it got safely. I did as well, when, when she's yeah. following out of the out of the gate, and then they just turn in the opposite directions. Yeah, and then I'm like, oh, that's foreshadowing, that's like, no, she should have followed it to give give them a fighting chance, yeah, kind of yeah. thing. Although now I'm thinking, that will Mr. Wrench be uh, be the saviour, um, perhaps? Yeah, yeah, almost a hero. Yeah, just, just kind of he, through he, circumstance. He's the one on the bus who you go... He can fight back. Yeah, uh, and of course, uh, as they're because you see the bus tip over, the music music gets very good. I thought the music was it was very very sort of uh, uh, it was a version of the Fargo theme, but it was obviously a very kind of emotional. Big things are happening, kind of. Yeah, it's very operatic. Up. Yeah, uh, but of course, the, the wearing masks that are coming on, and Yuri specifically has a wolf mask on, or more of a wolf hat. Yeah, well, he has it lifted up at the end when he's he's uh, trying to. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, of course, the it's a wolf. They're, they're really hammering home this theme, aren't they? Yeah, she's lying there unconscious, and there's like the sparks are flying in front of his wolf mask. It's very, very sinister, and like you say, very op- operatic and kind of mm. big ideas. So, no, I, I really enjoyed the end. I, I thought I was actually enjoying the episode as a whole. Anyway, like I thought it was a really strong episode, but the last like five minutes just kind of was like, yeah, yeah, it was good. It was all aftermath, and it was good, but in the last five minutes, made it exciting, and I was like, oh, definitely. Ever since episode. Five this season's just mm. really picked up and become properly great. Yeah, yeah. Now, of course, we stopped with Nikki there. We stopped with all Nikki and Gloria, but uh, we have uh, other stuff, namely Emmett uh, is the, is the main thing, who goes to the restaurant as planned to meet Sai and uh, Mary McDonald's character uh, Goldfarb, her name is, and it sh- you know it's all about selling the thing, and he comes in and he's like, oh, I need a drink, and. Obviously, you can tell there's a very interesting part in the middle where he uh, starts talking about being rich and about people wanting your money and all that kind of thing, mm. uh, and these beggars and people just you know try to like steal from you and things like that. And it almost sounded like he was trying to make himself feel better. He's trying to put put down who he was to try and make. Yeah, it feel like... he's trying to justify his position to himself. Yeah, even though he knows it's an accident, which is yeah. which I think is the really interesting sort of uh, like part of this is that he knows it's an accident but he's still trying to justify it he's still trying to make himself feel better that oh well sure i killed him but the world's better off well he's trying yeah just... yeah exactly it's like it was an accident but i can still take some positives from this almost if he if he spins it right in his head yeah and of course gloria and winnie were told uh not to pursue anything you know in, in their meeting with the supervisors and gloria quickly tells go, go, go and tell uh, emma about ray and see what his reaction is go 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 and she, he she, could not appear more guilty if he tried. No, he comes over. He doesn't hear a word they say. He's like, "I've been here since six. Like, that's the first yeah. word out of his mouth. Yeah, he goes, "I, I sorry, I've been here since six. <laughs> oh, I, did, I, I, I made a faint attempt at an impression there because I really laughed when he said it because he went really high, like he went really up he for the six. Yeah. Yeah. I've been here since six. It's, um, it's a proper a nervous thing when you go up like that, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it, it's excited as well because of the, the Minnesota accent, which already has kind of an upswing to it. It does. Uh, yeah. But it, it was going full on, and it and then, he, and then he's like, he's talking about uh, like catching a murderer before she's even said there's been foul play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, she just says, "Oh, raised dead." He's like. Oh, it's that Swango woman. <laughs> I know it was her. It's like, uh, I didn't mention, oh, uh, he said it was a heart attack. <laughs> like, and then she goes, no, so we suspect foul play. And she's like, see, told you. <laughs> was that Nicky? Uh, and then, then Sai sees that, it, you know, stuff's not going well. And obviously we see uh, when he goes over to talk to to uh, the Conagle's character, Goldfarb. I keep forgetting her name. She's always seen her like twice, but she goes over and it, the scene ends with her talking to her. But we see this, you know, Sai drives him home and they have that confrontation where where Emmett basically brings up everything that, that Varga was putting in his head 
uh, about oh, not trusting him. Maybe he was working with Ray, and he goes off in one, and then Sai's like, "What are you serious? I was working with Ray. I'm part. I'm partner in a multi-million dollar company, but I started working with your brother, who you know I hate, just so I could skim a few thousand. Yeah, th- that math does not work." And Emmett sees reason quite quite rightly, and he's like, oh, "I'm I'm sorry, sir." <laughs> I wonder. Yeah, he he gets away with it by saying it now, because it's like, oh, this is an emotion, a heightened emotion, because mm. his brother's just been, he's just been told his brother's dead, as far as Sai's concerned, yeah. anyway. But of course, Sai doesn't know how he died, admittedly. But like, no, no, but he, yeah. that, but that's that's why it works more for Sai, because he's like, right, he's just been told he's lost his brother. He doesn't know that he was involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's just taking it as him, you know, high emotions, everything's yeah. swirling, kind of thing, uh, and of course. You get in the house, and we actually we opened the episode. The first scene of the episode was Varga uh, cutting into all of Emmett's family's Christmas presents at the tree, uh, yeah. and like trying on the tie and looking at various things, and uh, just just I mean, if if you ever wanted the the metaphor of the wolves in your house going through your th- things, this is kind of the yeah. encapsulation of that. I, I think it it works especially well here because obviously his whole thing is wealth uh, is is just pointless. N- not w- like material wealth. Yeah. And so he he's going through all these you know possessions and being like what well, what's the point of all this? And he's just discarding them to the side every time no matter right. what it is. Although but when he comes in at the house just now though it, it looks like he rewrapped everything. It was it was like he was checking for stuff. Like he was checking for I don't know bugs or suspicious because there's a bunch of presents there unless he's yeah, replaced yeah. them all with things he he deems appropriate i don't know what, the, what that would be <laughs> but you see yeah. there, there's definitely presents there when he comes in so it yeah. looks like he's he's wrapped them all i actually almost want a montage now of Argyle like rewrapping all the presents well to be fair he opens them very carefully like with the knife he kind of slits it open from the end i mean oh, okay, okay that so, would that would tape back together quite easily i would imagine all right so you think he's just taped back the ones that he slit open rather than rewrapping from scratch it's- Perhaps. Okay, okay. Uh, but Emmett sits down the stairs, and obviously his house has got this sort of dueling stairway, you know, yeah. around the sides of the, the foyer. And the Christmas tree's on his side. And then on the other side is the big bear, the big stuffed bear that we've, we've had. You know, it's been there all season, but it was really noticeable in this scene because Varga comes down and sits on the other side of the stairs. He's on that side with the bear. Again, perfect visual yeah. imagery of him with the animal, the big wild beast, and, you know, Emmett on the other side with the Christmas tree. And... Obviously, Emmett's still swirling, and Varga tells him this story that his, his grandmother used to tell him about uh, crooked people meeting a cro- crooked man and a crooked suspense, yeah. sixpence. And, I don't know, I can't remember the exact no, story. They live in a crooked house, is, is the end. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the whole thing was that everyone's corrupt. Yeah. You just have basically. to accept it. Like, that was the point of the story. Uh, but as he, as he finishes it, we see the toll this is all taken on Sai. Sai is desperately trying to get out of this this company now because he's fearful of his life. Everything that's going on, his brother being killed, and he obviously he's suspecting that it could be Varga or someone because he knows how dangerous they are. He he's seen what they did to Nikki. He he's mm. so he, he's wrapped up in this. The money complaints, uh, the dick in the cup, <laughs> the, everything. Yeah. But but we've seen like even uh, when he was selling to Godfather or trying to, and Emmett was like, hey, maybe we should be buying you, buying you out. And then it's like, panicking. hey, you don't get where I go, where I am without you know, going off plan. Yeah, and he, he's panicking. He doesn't want this to yeah. be his life. And he goes home and I don't know if we've ever even... Maybe we've seen his wife at the party in episode one, but I don't remember her in any great detail. I, I don't really either know. But like, he, he, she, she, you know, she's been the, the happy wife putting on his, his indoor sort of cardigan and getting mm. his slippers ready. He's like, oh, I've got dinner for you. All that kind of thing. Or maybe not dinner. It was just that dinner. But you know, like she's she's welcoming home, being being all very nice and all that, and it just breaks down. Like he just, yeah. like, and it, it's so much that maybe he's been putting up a front for his wife. He's been you know keeping the strong face and acting like everything's fine while he's trying to like sort everything out. But clearly here he just can't do it anymore, and it's like he's realizing the shit that he's in. Yeah, and she she asks what what's wrong, and he just says the world, <laughs> and he goes, oh, I think he says. Uh, you know, I, I see it, but it's not... Uh, and everything looks the, the same, but it's not my world. Yeah. And it's... Yeah. yeah. You feel bad for it. Even I though... Do. Don't get me wrong. My my estimation of him has been down a little bit ever since the Nicky scene with the beating. Is it... Yeah, but, it, but now it just looks more like it was an act of cowardice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Than, There was nothing malicious in it. Oh, no. I mean, I never thought there was. I, I always thought... Yeah. I, I think my word when we watched that episode, I said, "No, he's a coward." Like that was a just yeah. an act, 
of that, but yeah. Uh, the other scene we, did, we haven't mentioned, uh, it's a really good little scene actually, but it's uh, Yuri going to the, the library slash police station and uh, Donnie's there and you see Donnie like, get the call to go out for something and he, le- he sees guns left on the table and he's like, oh no. And it actually, at, at the, the minute I was thinking, oh, is he going to need that when he's out? And that's like a bit of foreshadowing. But instead it's the, oh no, he realises he's not got his gun, he has to go back in to get his gun and that's when I'm like, oh, that's right, yeah, Yuri's coming to the, the station mm. for the for the files on the case and he comes in and Yuri's just standing in the library reading his re- reading a book and then he like tries to convince Donnie that he's just talking to himself as a part of his imagination uh, and it's all intimidation it's basically like look you're going to say no one was ever here you're going to pretend that I'm not here you're going to get your gun he tells him to go pick it up you're going to leave yeah. and Donnie basically pisses himself because he realises that this is yeah the moment I really like is when, when Donnie tells him to leave and then Yuri is like, say, say you told me to leave, and I did, and that's it. So it's like it's not even the, the idea mm. that he was never there; it's that he was there, but then he left. Yeah, because he says, "Yeah, I've left. I've already left. I'm yeah. gone. I'm not here yeah. anymore." He's, yeah, yeah he says those exactly. Uh, yeah. I thought that 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 was the best part of the imita- intimidation for me. And then he picks up. I, th- I thought it was a whip that was rolled up at first, but then I was like, it was more like a, a really sort of short saw. Yeah, yeah, it was a little hacksaw, I think. Yeah, uh, but. It, no, it was intimidating. And I like the idea that even once Donnie picks up his gun, he's still scared. He has to last to leave. Yeah, yeah, because there's that moment where, you know, he reaches around for the gun really quickly and, you know, the camera follows it and you almost think he's going to, as he stands up, it's going to mm. be like, you know, like the horror moment where he stood there with the saw up. But no, it, it's kind of scary away. But he doesn't even need to. It, it just shows how in control of the situation that Yuri's in, that he doesn't yeah. even have to worry about him having his gun. He doesn't have to, he's not concerned with that. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I mean, I called say a coward. Surely, this is cowardly, sure, but it's not like, like I'd be shitting myself if Yuri was coming at me with a saw as well. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, it, there's a difference between this and then going to check on someone who's hurt after after the danger's gone, kind yeah, of thing. Like, uh, uh, certainly, it's cowardly, sure, but it's it's justifiable <laughs> cowardice. <laughs> Definitely. Oh dear. Um, so that so that was episode seven of Fargo. Um, yeah. anything, anything else you wanted to talk about that I've skimmed no, over? No, I think we covered it. I, I mean, I really enjoyed the episode. Uh, I've, I thought that the first half of the season was pretty good still. Like, it was definitely enjoyable, but it's definitely gotten a lot better since, since it was, 5. It was enjoyable, but it lacked momentum. Yeah. Whereas now it feels like, ever since episode 5, ever since that episode hit, it's, it's feel like it's been in full gear going forward. Yeah, I think we, we said uh, the first few episodes, it was just, there was no urgency to anything. It was kind of meandering mm. around, like to the point where we literally had an episode just go off to LA. Why not? Yeah, where, yeah. Whereas now it's like, nah, no time for any of that bollocks anymore. Exactly, exactly. So now obviously we're enjoying the season. Obviously, we'll see if Mr. Wrench becomes the anti-hero that we, we hope he is. Because <laughs> I feel like Nicky needs a win. Like, like, you know, she beat to shit, Ray's now being killed, I feel like Nikki needs to come out on top in some small way. She can't just be beaten by yeah. the bad guys. She needs and, a and victory. I, I like the idea that Mr. Wrench is literally the, the, the wrench in the plans. Hmm. You know, yeah. like the idea that he, he, the, he can't account for that because he was a, an unknown quantity. Exa- yeah, yeah, that, that would be nice if, if it somehow works out that way. Uh so no there we go that's Fargo uh, episode 7 let us know what you thought of the episode in the comments below like subscribe all that stuff helps us out a lot you can help us out a bit more by going over at patreon.com slash TV. see some of the bonuses that you can get over there for supporting the channel but otherwise guys that is us so thank you very much for watching we will see you next time have you got any vanilla <laughs>